I'm uh, at the Center for Mobility Research at Lancaster University, and I'm a social scientist. Um, so um, my interest really is in citizen social science. And as you've gathered, we've all been asked to bring an object. Um, so I've brought a 19th century um, uh, cycle light. Um, it needs a little bit of lateral thinking, I have to say. Um, I've had it in my office um, since a uh, transport museum curator gave it to me at a mobile utopia workshop. He brought it to explore um, how, um, how we see where we're going, lighting our way, um, has changed over the years. So he brought this, he also brought an LED torch, and we also talked about how uh, Nowadays, a bike is actually digitally augmented, so you've got GPS sat-nav on it, and the cyclist himself, herself, might be augmented with environmental sensors, air pollution sensors, uh, heart rate measurements. Um, so um, that's what I'm interested in. And we've talked before today about the evidence gap. And there are lots of um, analogies around data that um, produce it as um, data as oil, or data as a window onto the real world, or data as a really strong torch onto reality. And the understanding is that if only had we had the, a really, really strong torch, um, we would understand social reality and we can then act on any problems that we identify. Um, and we are working with um, citizen data and citizen sense making in crisis management. Um, and there, the ability to collect and process data does not lead in any easy way to citizens receiving more assistance or being able to make a better sense of crises. Um, and it doesn't easily dovetail into the professional, formal disaster response either. Um, and that's because data is not a raw material, it's actually data is categorization, data is politics. Um, so at its best, in this context of crisis management, citizen-generated data, both in the sense of um, being you know, location data, um, just the natural data that we now create, but also content deliberately um, generated, um, in, in its best form, it's disruptive of the relationships um, of how crisis management is being um, conducted. Okay, so data really measure only what can be measured and what we decide to measure. And that is a political um, thing we do. So data is um, an, epistemo an epistemology um, it's politics, it's also an ontology, it makes us what we are, it's reflexive in, in that way. And so if we are allowing um, that sort of augmentation through data to happen, also as part of how we do social science, I think we should do so carefully. So social science, as far as I uh, do it, is really good at um, making us care about social problems, recognize them, and help us to be careful in intervening in social reality. And it's about understanding uh, social life and um, doing something um, to make it better. So as we are inviting citizens into social science in and through what we might call life world dot social science, we should remember that as members of society, it, social, social science is an endogenous thing that we all already do. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, it's not about making a bigger torch to reflect reality better, and then we know. Um, we could use the idea of, um, Thrift talks about lifeworld.inc in relation to the data that we generate naturally as a form of critique of knowing capitalism. So we could use science as a way of critiquing how social science, science innovation is being done in societies today.